Welcome to the beautiful island of Koh Phang Yang. And you see that island in the distance over there? Today we're gonna have a little adventure. We're gonna try and kayak around. Apparently there's a cave on the backside, a lagoon and a beautiful beach and only accessible by kayak or a jet ski. But um, we're, we're gonna go get a kayak. We're gonna go have some fun. I'll show you some more of this beautiful island and at the end, I'll show you this place. This is where I'm staying. This place is good. We're living the good life on Koh Phang Yang. So come and have a fun adventure with us today as we go over there to whatever the island's called. <laughs> My name is Paddy Doyle and this is my little Honda dream and welcome to Next Level Adventures. Right now we are attempting to visit every single province in Thailand. We've had some incredible adventures already but the best part is we're only just getting started. So subscribe and join us as we discover this incredible country together. I'm staying at the uh, Blue Rama, which is, it's a resort um, that one of you guys recommended because it has a, like a really beautiful pool, as you saw, and, uh, and for 800 baht, you can stay here in like a fancy beach hut. If you saw the last video, we stayed in a hut for 300 baht. Um, this one's 800. Again, that's COVID prices, right? So I think they're a little bit more normally. But they're really good. They've got air conditioning, really nice furnishing, smart TV to watch Netflix on, and a lovely comfortable bed. And then outside, they've got a hammock and area and just hang out. And the views are outrageous. We've got uninterrupted views to the beach and the sea and it's incredible. And then at night, in the afternoons as well, the Blue Rama pool area turns into a restaurant and they serve really good food and the views are incredible and a handful of people come up every afternoon. They also have like low key DJs playing like chill music until about nine or 10 o'clock. And uh, I've been having a few good afternoon sessions by that pool with some of my new friends here on the island, meeting subscribers and things. Anyway, Nice place, Blue Rama. I'll leave it in the uh, description of this video. And um, we just got to pop out and get some lunch and then we'll go get our kayak. But yeah, I'm gonna put some cream. We don't wanna burn, do we? And just like that, we are at one of the Thai rice and curry places. The reason why I always choose these places is because it takes no time. You don't have to wait, you just order with your eyes. And the good thing about this place, I've been every day, um, three days in a row, is it's always different. So today I've got a nice bowl, a nice selection. This is squid with green beans, very good. Uh, some cucumber and green beans. They actually give you a giant bowl of spinach, mint, cucumber and green beans on the side for free. <laughs> so, and a dipping sauce. So incredible, raw greens and raw veggies uh, served with the dish. Anyway, then I got this black chicken. She says it's very spicy and this is new. They didn't have this, any of these yesterday. And then chicken and ginger. And it's so strong, the smell of ginger. And there's mushrooms and onions and sweet corn. And it's just incredible, you know. Three plates, 50 baht. Three ingredients on rice with a bowl of uh, a plate of greens. 50 baht. <laughs> so cheap. And uh, let's try a little bit of that black chicken because I want to know how spicy is it. Because when Thai people say it's spicy in the south, you've got to be careful. You see that? You see the pepper and the spice on there? Yep. <laughs> wow. Wow, let's wash that down with some spicy green beans. <laughs> Look how much ginger you get with the chicken. Incredible. Mm.
can you see? It seems to be uh, like grass. Have a look. Let's get her up on this dry sand. Okay, we're here. And uh, doesn't get more paradise than this, does it? With this sand bank here and the way it snakes up onto the uh, the island. Now over there, there's some trees. I think that circles around the lagoon because from up there where we're staying, you can see there's like a freshwater lagoon. Maybe it's a salt water lagoon. We'll find out. And then uh, then we'll get back on the kayak and we'll go around the back because everybody there said that there was a really beautiful cave. So. Right then, let's leave the island. Couple of plastic bottles here. Can't carry all of them, but I'll carry a couple. You see the plastic bottles at the campsite? Jesus, it's not difficult, is it? Anyway, other than that, it's pretty pristine here. Lots of driftwood, obviously, but. One of the questions I get asked a bit is, you know, oh, don't you wish you didn't have to film? You know, don't you wish you could just enjoy traveling around Thailand? Oh, my kayak is floating away. <laughs> um, and my answer is always the opposite. No, filming makes it for me. I could have just stayed in my room, in the hammock, you know, doing nothing. But because I want to make a nice video, because I want to make a good content and make an entertaining travel channel and put my heart and soul into it, I'm like, no, let's go kayaking, let's, let's go have adventures and let's climb this mountain, let's go to this province, let's go to that province. So for me, filming it makes it. So when I have to set up these shots and things of me doing stuff, I like doing that. It makes it more fun to watch and it makes it more fun to film. Sometimes I'm like, oh, Jesus. I think those moments are like when I'm editing late at night and I'm just tired, but I'm like, oh, I need to get this video done. That's the only time where I'm like, oh. But you know, that's all part of it. And this is my office now. <laughs> so, cannot complain, not for a second. Okay, isn't that beautiful? The color of the water. We're coming around the side of it now. One thing you can't see because I'm paddling, but you see a lot of fish jumping out of the water and things and it's absolutely gorgeous. Stunning actually. Wow. Anyway, we're kind of like at the other side of the island, so we should find this cave soon. I don't know, I don't really know what to look for. Just looking for like a stereotypical triangle cave entrance, but we are into the wind as well, so it's quite hard. But I think on the way back it'll be way easier. Anyway, let's let's carry on. Of course I fell in. How could I not fall in? Because I'm an idiot. Okay. You stay here. Uh, 
a cave, cave small. It's just kind of like, you know, a little cave. It's still beautiful. And uh, everybody says to come here at sunset, but because of the time of the year or the tide or whatever, sunset is super low tide. So unless you're quite experienced on a kayak, it's not worth it because it's quite, it's quite tricky to get here. And uh, my kayak is getting battered against the rocks and I don't want to lose it. So I, I'm actually just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> uh, nice cave, lagoon's better, kayaking on the sea is the best part. My kayak's getting battered. Okay, <laughs> let's get back out of there. During this entire trip, there's been some times where I've been in touristy places, right? Koh Lanta, Koh Phi Phi, places like that. And in those touristy places, yeah, I do see lots of businesses closed down, lots of places shut forever. And some of them are temporary. And I never really, you know, point the camera in that direction because it's distasteful. But today I came down to Hat Yai, which is the part of Koh Phang Yang, um, where full moon party always used to be. And 30,000 people once a month would flock from all over Tha Thailand, even Southeast Asia, people would fly in, get the ferry just to party under the full moon, put UV color paint on, drink buckets, of spirit mixers and dance till the sun comes up and I did it three times I, I was coming to Thailand since I was 21 right so I've been to quite a few full moon parties and they were trashy they were absolute debauchery and some happy memories some cringy memories since we got a little bit of light left before sunset I thought I'd pop up here and, and have a look around and this is the first time where I'm just like taken aback and a little bit speechless and sad because this is never gonna come back. This is something that COVID killed, not just temporarily put on pause. You can come to Thailand right now. You can come if you're vaccinated, you can come to Phuket, you can come to Samui in the sandbox scheme, spend a week. After you finish that, you can travel wherever you like in Thailand. Tourism's not dead. It's still going, just something like this is never going to come back. 30,000 people on a beach raving. Oh, I just don't think it's going to happen. This would be like the fever pitch. 30,000 people, they would funnel down these streets and uh, there would be live music and crazy lights in the sky, lasers, massive speakers, and there'd be like 20 parties next to each other. What was this? I don't know what that used to be. Yeah, I came here before when they were using the um, Yeah, yeah. Buckets with any mixer. And they used to have hundreds of buckets here and people selling them. 150 baht for a mojito. That was the one I used to get. And then I think around about here, they used to have like an area cornered off, about the same size as a tennis pitch. And uh, they would just like put all the drunkest people in there, pass, let them pass out. And there would be doctors and nurses on hand to make sure they didn't die. And uh, you would just drop your really drunk friend off there, go party, and then come back and pick them up when they'd sobered up or woken up at like five o'clock in the morning. Because some people just could not pace themselves. Luckily, I wasn't ever that person, but <laughs> I've had a few crazy nights here. And then in the distance there, that's uh, Mushroom Mountain. And that's kind of where everybody would end up at sunrise for mushrooms. The beach area is still alive. There's fishermen, there's tourists here. A fraction of what they used to be, but the full moon party and the ecosystem around that sadly seems to be gone forever, guys. Doesn't look like, well, it doesn't feel like that's ever gonna come back. 
not for a very long time at least. Things are definitely changing. I'm not just saying this, right, but I actually think this is one of the nicest beaches in Thailand. I'm putting this in the top 10. Had Rin, Sunrise Beach. The Sunset Beach on the other side is a bit meh. The sand, the, the quality of the water, the quality of the, of the whole beach and the accommodations here. Half of it is a bit under construction, is a bit noisy down the other end. But this end, up near the uh, Mushroom Mountain, I haven't seen a beach this good in a bloody long time. finished our day adventuring around Kopayang just in one area you know we went to the kayaking island that was fun I showed you some local food we went to Hadrin and we saw the beautiful surprise over there and now I'm back at Blue Rama I've ordered some incredible dinner mackerel steak and they've got cold beers here and incredible people and beautiful view I can't talk for too long because he's playing copyright music in the background so I'm just gonna leave it Nah, I'm just gonna leave it here, okay? Have a look. What do you think? Is this your idea of paradise? Would you like to live here with everybody else? There's hundreds and hundreds of expats living here and uh, it looks like they've got the good life out here, man. This looks like... It doesn't get better than this, especially with everything that's going on and all of the other provinces that we've been to. Personally, I prefer that more Thai places. A bit more of Thailand. This, here you don't really feel like you're in Thailand. You could be anywhere but it's beautiful. It's incredible. Anyway, thanks for watching and enjoy the sunset with me. Thanks for watching again. I get so cringy at the end of these videos. <laughs> oh god. Yep.